Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk to you about relaxing an insect. That is, if you don't feel like rubbing its feet and talking softly to it, this is an alternative. I don't talk about relaxing insects very much because most of what I catch is this size. Now, you can see that there's probably 200 specimens in this little, this little jar. Uh, things that are a millimeter or less across. That's what I like to photograph. But most people don't. Most people like to photograph something that you can see, for example, so that you know where to point the camera. Now, oftentimes, if you catch an insect, it'll remain limber and poseable for usually a few hours. But eventually, its limbs are going to get rock solid and you're not going to be able to move them and when you try to move them they'll break. So how do we how do we relax an insect? Well that's a, actually a huge question because there are so many different kinds of insects, so many different techniques for relaxing them. It depends what they are and what you're trying to do with them. But I'm going to give you just a simple basic example that'll work for most things most of the time. Now the reason I'm doing this now is because of this bug study that I'm doing. I'm comparing the people that sell bugs to uh, photographers and other collectors uh, to compare them, to see who's doing a better job than uh, other people. And it's been a fascinating study. The result, though, is I have a ton of insects that are just gigantic to me. I mean, way bigger than anything that I normally would photograph. This is my relaxing chamber. And I have removed part of it so that you can see the rest of it. The, um, this is very complicated. The chamber consists of a Tupperware box with a lid that fits tight and uh, an old broken piece of something or other um, a radio or a, I don't know what it came from. It's just a piece of metal with holes in it that I put little screws through and then bolted them that sits on top of a sopping wet piece of kitchen paper, shop paper actually, because it holds more water. And then this bit goes on top. Now, normally there would be another piece of that blue paper on top of the metal because the metal can discolor some of the, uh, some of the bugs will discolor on fresh metal and then others will discolor when the metal rusts. So you definitely want to cover that uh, normally, but I'm just doing this so you can see it. What we're gonna be working on today is this little fella. Um, he is a weevil. So let me tell you how the relaxing goes. You take your, your insects, you lay them out on the kitchen paper make sure the bottom part's wet. Then you fold a second piece of paper over the top of the insects, careful not to press down on it or anything like that. And then you're going to just dribble some fresh water, um, deionized if you've got it, over the top piece of kitchen paper. Now, an insect like this ant may need to be in the chamber for a day, a day and a half. Uh, but this little uh, damselfly probably only needs to be in the chamber for about 12 hours. The skinnier they are, the more the moisture will get into them. And all you want is the moisture to get in enough to soften the muscles that have hardened, that are holding the, the appendages rigid. We're not worrying about all of that. If you want to, to know much more about this, like ask me questions about it and, and, and dig into to the whole insect thing. That's one of the things I love spending time doing at my live stream, which is every Tuesday night at eight o'clock, eight o'clock central time in the US. No tickets required, it's free, it's for you. It's a YouTube thing I'm doing and you just come with your questions and to the extent that I can talk fast enough, I'll answer everybody's questions. And lots and lots of people have questions about, about bugs, relaxing them, posing them, shooting them, and so on and so on and so on. So we'll, we'll save some of the detail for that. Uh, YouTube, eight o'clock on a Tuesday night.
don't miss it. It's called Mastering Macro because we talk about everything macro, not just insects. So once I've got my insects and I, I'm very careful not to overcrowd the pan, not because it really makes any difference to what's in here, but you don't want too many insects relaxed at the same time because this is a dangerous condition for an insect to be in because as it softens up, its innards will become hydrated again and any bacteria that are in there will start to grow and they will start to rot. Worse than having them start to rot, though that's pretty bad, is they'll get a, a mold growing on them. And once that happens, they're pretty much lost. So what I also do is I put a couple of drops of phenol um, into the, the water. You can use um, alcohol, will do it. Uh, ethyl acetate will do it. Acetone will do it. Just be careful what you put in here because it's a plastic dish and some of those solvents dissolve plastic. So once I've done that, I put the lid on and I seal it tightly and I keep it in a room temperature, dark place. Don't leave it in the direct sunlight. It'll get too hot and you'll steam your insects, which is not the point. All you want to do is let the moisture in the air equilibrate inside the, the appendages. Every now and again, open the box, wiggle an appendage. Is it starting to get loose? If it is, you're almost there. So keep a close watch on it. Um, don't let the whole thing get flaccid, uh, floppy, uh, because that's too far. And then once it gets floppy, it'll fall apart. Already relaxed, this little green weevil is most of the way, uh, because I put it in yesterday in anticipation of doing this video. So what we're gonna do now is I am going to show you how to take a relaxed insect and put it in position to photograph and have it stay in that position. You have a limited amount of time to position and once you position it and then the appendage is set or harden in the new position, it's much harder to relax them after that, I find. That's when they're much more likely to break. So I, I like to think of it as you've just got one crack at doing this. Now, so when you take this thing out, it should be relaxed and probably a little bit moist. Um, it is important that you wash these uh, if, you, if you see any dirt on it at all. Hopefully you've got a good magnifying glass or even a microscope so you can look at the insect. Make sure it's squeaky clean because once you get to this point, you don't want to have to clean it. If you haven't cleaned it and you just now remember that you haven't, you would take it, you'd put it in soapy water. Well, that's water with a little bit of soap. Swish it around, put it in fresh water and do that two or three times when you get ready to pose an insect, you want to first of all, look at it. And by look at it, I mean look at it as if you were the camera. So you want to look at the thing from all angles. Uh, you want to look at it from uh, the front, from the sides, from above, from below, to find out how it looks best, where it looks best, because you're gonna pose it to show its best side. There are as many different ways to do this as anything else in macro photography, but I'm going to show you my favorite way um, because, because it works and I like it. Uh, I use these things I make as I need them. I never throw the old one away because it'll work for similar sized beetles, but for, you know, for that big ginormous beetle, I have to make a fresh one. And I've got boxes of them all over the place. This is closed cell foam, the kind of foam that comes in camera equipment. Um, once you decide you're not gonna have to repack the camera up and you want some of this, this is the best. It's very light, but it's, it's very solid, very, very solid. And it holds a pin like wood. So uh, these are the best by a million miles. So you're gonna sit your weevil on his little perch, just like that. First of all, rule number one, you're never putting a pin through anything, okay? 
So when you hear me say pin, I'm, I'm usually talking about putting a pin next to something or putting a pin with a little bit of glue on the end of it onto something. I very, very, very seldom actually put a pin into an insect. Not for any squeamish reason or anything, it's just they last longer if you don't. Now, I'm gonna take six pins and bend them like this. Get a very fine pair of needle nose plier things. You're gonna bend the pin a little bit to one side of midway at 90 degrees, like that. Then you're gonna go a little bit down the way and bend the other half of the pin at 90 degrees in the opposite direction like so. And I recommend you overshoot a little bit so it's like a thunderbolt. Can you see that? That's very nice right there. Now, the reason I do this is, this stuff holds pins better than anything in the world. Uh, and if you have that much pin, that's a solid, solid hold. So what I'll do is I'll take two of them with the bendy bit facing in, and I will put the two pins inside the uh, segment that I'm trying to hold in place. As I push these down, the now relaxed appendages are going to go down with those shelves. What you're trying to do is get a nice limb, posi <coughs> limb position for them to um, reset in, so to speak. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the side ones. This normally, if you're concentrating and not running your mouth the whole time takes two minutes to do. If you've ever put up a tent, you know, with the ropes and the, the pegs you hammer into the ground, this is nothing like that. If you're wondering if it's worth it, it will, it will make all the difference in the world to your macro photographs. When you go to the trouble to put a weevil or a beetle in position as if it's walking, it will pay off so much you won't believe uh, you ever did it without. That's it. Okay, so that was good when I just stopped and paid attention for a minute. And that's what it looks like. Now, it, it looks a little bit like it's bent over the barrel a bit, but that is, that's actually the way they, these things walk with their snout to the ground. Uh, so it's actually a very natural pose. But what I would do is I would leave that now for six hours, eight hours, however long it took, and then I would pull one of the pins back and see if the leg comes up. If the leg comes up, repin it and leave it again. Some insects are so unstable, I do put a pin between the thorax and the abdomen into the foam temporarily just to hold it, but very seldom. And, uh, and that's it. You wait long enough, then when, uh, when one of the limbs doesn't rise up, none of them will. You pull all the pins out and you're going to have a weevil that you could actually sit on the table on his feet. You wouldn't want to do that because the weight of the body will gradually splay them out. That's when you would apply a pin to the bottom of the thing, pose it the way you're going to and get it ready to shoot. But that's the subject for another day. So that's all there is to it. Relax an insect and uh, give it a natural looking pose. It'll be the best thing you ever did to boost your macro stuff. Now, don't forget Tuesday, eight o'clock in the evening, live stream on YouTube. If you can't go, come for any reason, there's a video that I make, a recording of the live stream, so you can at least hear what went on. See you on Tuesday evening at eight o'clock or in the next video, whichever comes first. If you want to join my Patreon club, uh, we do macro all day, every day, 25 hours a day macro. That's an exaggeration, but it's a lot. I won't say anything else about it for now. Go to Patreon and look me up and you'll see my page and you'll see how it works if you want to be a supporter. If you don't want to be a supporter, well, thank you for thinking about it. And I'll see you uh, in the next video. Take care and be well. See you at the live stream. Bye.